Our concluding passage is of there are no foreign people. Throughout the book, my metaphorical emphasis has been on the pest ban between human beings that I scrawled across my Iraqi and Syrian visa as a hitchhike across the Middle East when I was 20 years old in 1967. Yeah. And in the book itself is printed uh, the inspiration for this phrase, Pest Ban. It was written by Edgar Allan Poe 178 years ago. The Mask of the Red Death. So I'm going to perform this brief short story for you. And yes, uh, Goddess Earth, don't just perform the original, like you've told me many times before. I'll bring it up to date uh, uh, to 2020. Uh, improv and uh, make it relevant for the uh, human condition right now. I'm so blessed to have her within me to co-create these uh, passages, performances. Uh, we do this together. Bless you. The Mask of the Red Death by Edgar Allan Poe, written in 1842. Mm -hmm. The Red Death had long devastated the countryside, the United States. No pestilence uh, had ever been so fatal or so hideous. Uh, blood was its avatar and its seal. The redness, horror of blood. There were sharp pains, sudden dizziness, and then profuse bleeding at the pores with dissolution. Scarlet stains all over the body, and especially on the face of the victim, where the pest ban would shut that person out from the sympathy of his countrymen and the international community. The whole seizure, seizure progress, termination of the disease, an incident of half an hour. Take that ventilator mask off and why is it on? The human being can't breathe on his own anymore and uh, after a half an hour of the coronavirus you are dead. What? Wow! Uh, uh, <clears throat> But the Prince Prospero uh, was happy, dauntless, and sagacious, he thought. Uh, when his dominions were half populated, 320 Americans and 160 million gone, dominions half populated, uh, he summoned to his presence a thousand hale uh, and light hearted friends. Uh, from among the knights, uh, dames, and uh, prostitutes uh, of his court, and uh, with these, uh, retired within the uh, deep seclusion of one of his castellated, battlemented Trump Towers. Oh yeah, gold ladders, 20 feet high, T-R-U-M-P, yeah, oh, and yeah, Battlemented at the top so the Trump helicopter could land. Oh, so nobody could shoot a missile at it. Oh. Uh, extensive and magnificent structure. Uh, like the Taj Mahal Casino in Atlantic City. Oh, they blew that up? Hmm. Tore it down? <laughs> Went bankrupt. Yeah, strong and lofty, 
Mm -hmm. And uh, with, with fortified walls and uh, with from the walls, the, the gates were made out of iron and uh, the courtiers, when they entered, they brought in uh, blast furnaces and massive hammers so they could bolt for a final time the uh, drawbridges shut. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, he wanted to eliminate all ingress and egress In and out. possibilities because uh, um, within his own ministration uh, there were impulses of despair and frenzy yeah from within well the the trump tower was amply provisioned uh you want a cheeseburger there's a mcdonald's in the lobby put it on his tab no problem um uh, cocaine <laughs> oh Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the external world, um, they, they'd have to take care of themselves, or as Trump referred to them, uh, <laughs> those poor suckers stuck back in the ghetto with the coronavirus, especially those homeless camps in the parking lots and tents. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, Trump and his uh, supporters. Defiance uh, uh, to the contagion of COVID-19. Yeah, defiance. Uh, phew, yeah. Uh, external world, <laughs> yeah, like, take a hike. Um, uh, the prince uh, had provided all of the uh, possibilities of pleasures. Uh, oh, there were buffoons. Yeah, uh, Pompeo, bumping valleys with Mar, huh? and uh, <sighs> ballet dancers from Vegas. Mm -hmm. uh, in the meantime, like you're inside, it was it was folly to grave and to uh, think. <laughs> yeah, uh, there were musicians, uh, Trump Orchestra. Uh, and uh, everything, security, especially within and without the coronavirus. Yeah. Well, it was toward the fifth uh, or sixth month of uh, his seclusion with his hundred chosen. Uh, followers, uh, he had to issue bibs because their obedience and uh, 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 self-flattery caused them to drool all over themselves. So, like, you know, keep it clean, issue the bibs, and uh, while the pestilence outside raged furiously, millions <laughs> going down, you know. Well, well uh, while that, uh, you know, uh, President Trump and uh, entertained his uh, thousand friends. Uh, and it cost big bucks to get in. You had to have a billion dollars to to be, uh, you know, sit at the, uh, well, he had a McDonald's uh, in the lobby. Uh, you know, to get a cheeseburger cost you a billion bucks, yeah. And uh, what did he do, you know, with his background as a fabulous entertainer? reality show uh he made uh a masquerade ball mm -hmm. during that fifth and sixth month yeah uh, there were still 160 million americans alive you know half the glass was half dead and half the bubbles kind of went out of that champagne uh, oh it was a voluptuous scene you know uh you know, a hundred of the thousand were hookers and, uh, well, the best, you know, in the world. You know, $5,000 an hour. 
You know, to get her take a knee and give you a bowl job, that was already a grand, and it just went <laughs> up from there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this masquerade. Uh, but first, uh, yes, got it. Tell the uh, folks about the interior decor of the Trump Tower. Well, yeah, it was um, a long... Uh, a long uh, avenue of suites. There were seven of them, seven chambers. The biggest one was the first one with the Trump Orchestra. And then there was another one that came off there, but at a 45 degree angle. I mean, it beautiful places like Versailles out of Paris, which, you know, uh, Monique and I tripped on crystal acid in Versailles. Yeah, we went around the world, threw a lot of money around. <laughs> um, between each chamber, there are massive sliding doors. So you can have one room or open all the sliding doors, you know, through the seven of them in Trump Tower. Uh, but Trump, uh, he's more twisted in, his, in the architecture of his brain <clears throat> and building. So after the first corridor, he twisted the next chamber 45 degrees. That way you couldn't see the next chamber from the previous chamber. And then after that, 45 degrees the other way. And it was a snaky uh, situation. So uh, you could try to get away with more per chamber. And... Uh, Oh, so it was like a snake e effect. And outside all of the seven <laughs> twisty chambers was a common corridor in which were placed outside each corridor a beautiful tripod brazier with a, a live fire. Yeah. And that shone into each chamber through the tinted windows. And, you know, Trump, he did it. He, he, he made it psychedelic. <laughs> if only it dropped a trip at Burning Man, the world would have been saved. Um, so the first chamber, let's talk about the first chamber. It's, uh, the uh, theme is blue. And there's ornaments uh, 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 thrown around, the blue carpet and uh, blue crystal balls and blue ornamentation. And there were our narrow Gothic windows uh, on both sides of each chamber uh, with those fire blaziers on the other side. And the, the key was the tinted windows in these Gothic windows were uh, blue. They matched the inner decor of the chamber. So you had this really glowing, trippy uh, effect. Uh, yeah, blue. And then uh, the next one, uh, green. And... Uh, you know, the prevailing hue of the chambers varied in accordance with the uh, prevailing hue of the decorations into which it opened, yeah. So there was the eastern extremity, you know, hung in blue, when the orchestra hung out there, and uh, ornaments, tapestries, uh, windows were blue. Second chamber was purple in its ornaments and tapestries. Yeah. And here the panes were purple. Third was green throughout, mm -hmm. and so were the green uh, tinted window casements. The fourth was furnished and lighted with orange. The fifth was white. You see there's a pattern to this? Uh, the sixth, violet, yeah. The seventh apartment was closely shrouded in black velvet tapestry that hung all over the ceiling, what? down the walls, and onto the floor. All the same hue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But in this final seventh chamber, uh, the window casement panes uh, didn't match like the other ones. Uh, uh, this particular window uh, pane was scarlet. Blood, red, I don't know, like 
the color of my chapeau. Mm hmm Yeah, yeah. Well, um, there was no light of any kind uh, from a candle or lamp uh, within this final chamber, you know, and uh, in it was a huge ebony clock, floor-to-ceiling ebony clock. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, you know, swung to and fro. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, But let me tell you more about the clock.